Well, recently I purchased this diesel generator. It used to be a light tower, but I removed the lights. But the generator does work and it works well. Uh, but unfortunately it's 120 volts only. I would really like to have 240 volts. So I picked up this isolation transformer for only 50 bucks on Facebook Marketplace, brought it home. So today, let's see if we can wire it in. We'll see if we can get a nice 240 volts out and then we'll do a new fuel economy test. So here we go. Hi everybody, I'm David and I'm on a mission to take my house and garage off grid. Now most of the year I run on those solar panels behind me, but in the winter, we do need to run a generator. So I like running some generator test videos for all of you. This is a nice little three cylinder liquid cooled Kohler engine connected to a 6kVA 120 volt generator head. It has a 32 gallon uh, fuel capacity for the tank on board. It used to be a light tower. The lights didn't work and that's why I was able to buy this unit for $1,000. I removed the lights, but the generator head works and that's what we're gonna play with today. Uh, in a previous video, I ran a fuel economy test and it was 7.7 .7 kilowatt hours per gallon of diesel. Today, we're gonna wire in this isolation transformer. This is a 10 kVA one-to-one isolation transformer. So it should work really well for our application. We're gonna feed 120 volts in, get 240 volts out. Uh, now, the transformer is not perfectly efficient, so we're gonna lose some efficiency there, but we might pick up a little efficiency on the charger that we're gonna be plugging into this. The charger likes 240 volts and runs more efficiently at 240 volts. So, who knows? <laughs> we'll see, maybe the numbers will just work out exactly the same as they did before. Maybe it'll be a little better, a little worse, but we're gonna run the test, we'll find out together. Well, here's the isolation transformer. I picked that up for only $50. It has one-to-one -one wiring. Uh, so the primary and secondary coils have the same number of turns. Uh, it's a nice little unit and uh, the wires were just cut, <laughs> but here's the old wire nuts on it. Anyways, we'll be playing with that. And here's the light tower, the Wacker Newson. Inside here, we have a 32 gallon fuel tank. Here's the three cylinder diesel engine and it's just about one liter capacity. There we go. And it's liquid cooled, nice little unit. We'll come around to the other side. Inside here, this is the six kVA generator head which puts out 120 volts only. In a previous video, I made this custom extension cord and that's what we'll take apart and wire into the transformer now. Inside the garage, we're doing some wiring on this transformer. And here's the label. It's an old General Electric. It's a one-to-one -one transformer, meaning the primary and secondary coils have the same number of turns. So we can feed the primary coil with 120 or 240 and get 120 or 240 out. Somebody's already wired it as 120 volts on the primary side. It says right there, connect H1 and H3. And if we look at these wires, uh, we've got H3 and H1 put together with a big electrical split bolt there. And over here, somebody's connected H2 and H4. So right here is where we need to feed our 120 volts in. And then over on the other side, we get our 240 volts out right here uh, with a neutral. So all that's wired up. We're gonna take our uh, box here. I've already removed everything and we'll probably just tape the box on or tie it in place and get it all wired together and then wheel this whole dolly mess out by the uh, generator and wire it together and run our test. So whatever these are wrapped up in, they were not meant to come off. They, they are on there really well. It's kind of a, a rubbery mixture here. Um, so I'm gonna try cutting it off. Well, now we're left with our X1, X2, X3, and X4. And 
Now these can be wired up for 240 volts. So the instructions on the secondary are to wire the X2 and X3 together. So these ones, X1 will be L1, X4 will be L2, and then X2 and X3 get wired together as the neutral. So on the secondary coil, we have X2 and X3, they're wired together. Uh, this puts the two halves of the electrical coil in series with each other so that we get 240 volts out. I added the white wire uh, so this can be a neutral, uh, just in case I want to plug something else in that needs a neutral, but uh, I don't need it for this fuel test because the charger does not use the neutral. I'm currently wiring in these displays. So I put a second display in here to measure the output and a display for the input. Uh, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to see how efficient this transformer is. Well, I think the transformer is done. And yes, none of this is correct. Uh, it should be in conduit going through a knockout like that. Uh, but I mean, I only used this cord last time uh, for the one test and then removed it. And now we're gonna run it on this one test and remove it again. So is what it is we have a 240 volt twist lock plug this is the l14-30 inside the garage is the battery pack and the wires come out here and go to this victron smart shunt that is measuring all the power flow in and out and i can read it with this app on a cell phone then we'll follow the wires over here and we have the eg4 charge verter and we just are using one with this test because we're running 240 volts. The cord is gonna come over and plug in. So, so we're gonna plug the cord for that charge verter into this 240 volt plug. We're gonna be able to see the electricity coming out of the generator and into this transformer and then out of the transformer and into the plug. We'll have a metered amount of fuel after we start the engine and let it run a little bit, warm it up. I will start the timer and reset the history on the smart shunt once the fuel reaches five quarts. We'll end when the fuel reaches one quart. So I've got both the supply and return fuel hoses for this three cylinder liquid cool diesel engine. That's the entire setup. <laughs> so let's get going. I love running these fuel tests on different generators uh, through the charger. Uh, going to the battery bank and we're measuring the electricity that's going into the battery bank so we're going to be able to take into account all the inefficiencies in the system there's going to be a loss in this charge verter and there's loss now in the transformer but we'll be able to take all that into account we're measuring gallons of diesel fuel in for how many kilowatt hours we feed to the battery bank which is inside the garage it is winter time, so I want to capture as many kilowatt hours as I can from the setup. Now, a quick note, a lot of people are asking me to do a combined heat and power system where we tap off the heat from the coolant system. And I can't wait to run those tests for you as well. Uh, but we're going to start all these tests with just kilowatt hours and do the uh, heat recovery as secondary. Uh, but it is something that's on my radar. breaker on. So we have 119 volts going in. The transformer itself is consuming 83 watts, well, plus these displays. And then, can we see that? 240 volts out. That's exactly what we want. All right, now this generator has a 120 volt generator head. Its main circuit breaker is 50 amps. So I'm going to be playing with the settings a little bit 
and wanting to make sure that we don't exceed 50 amps at the 120 volt side. So we'll be monitoring that. I might have to change uh, something on the charge verter to make sure we get there. The 90 amp setting on the charge verter seems to be working out pretty well. We are maintaining 45 amps on the generator head right now. So I'm gonna leave it the way it is. And once that fuel level hits five quarts, we'll begin the test. Okay, so we're doing pretty good. All right, how are we doing? That looks good. Over here, we'll reset our history. And now we're at zeros. Good. Well, this has been working out excellent. We've been maintaining good voltage. An hour and 41 minutes. And it looks like we're good to go. Let's go check it. See how we did. 7.9 kilowatt hours. Wow, we actually did better. All right, let's shut this off. We're gonna give it a little cool down period. Wow, 7.9 kilowatt hours per gallon. That means that it did better running through this transformer than before when I had two separate charge verters. Is that what you expected? Because I did not think it was gonna get any better. I thought we were either gonna get the same result or a little bit worse. Please let me know in the comments below. Now, something interesting that I, I noticed, the voltage coming out of this generator was maintaining 116 volts throughout the whole test, the whole hour and 40 something minutes. Now, before uh, we were maintaining about 111 volts, I think, on the test last week, which means that the voltage was maintaining better, but nothing changed. You know, I didn't adjust the throttle, the the capacitor is the same, you know, everything about this generator is the same. So my only guess is that because these are power supplies, the charger charging the battery is a power supply and power supplies do not use all of the sine wave evenly. They chop just the top and the bottom. So they have a very low power factor. So I'm guessing that the inductance in the iron core of this transformer helped smooth that out but it's just a working theory. I, I don't know, I'm not an electrical engineer. But hey, we got better results than last time, so that's great. Uh, maybe I'm going to try to see if I can mount this permanently on the tongue of this uh, generator or something because now that I know it's worthwhile having it, I might keep it. <laughs> if you enjoy these videos and appreciate the time it takes to set up and run these types of tests, then please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and share the video with others you think might also enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching.